Though she had never actually seen what happened to the van her husband was driving the day he died, Yvonne Moran says she has always been certain about one thing. In her heart, she knew what the police and what the hospital, and finally what the car maker said about how Bart died could not be true. Does it help to see it? Yes, it does. I never knew how much damage there really was to the car. It just is not right. Five Christmases ago, Bart Moran makes an early run to the store. Yvonne is cooking a turkey, but needs a bigger pan. Bart's 1997 Dodge Caravan approaches this corner. To his right, a 17-year-old driving a full-size sedan runs the intersection and slams into Bart. His van skids sideways, then rolls three times, leaving a trail of glass and debris. Though the airbag opens, Bart is still hurled out of the rear passenger window. And I went in and saw him lying in that hospital bed. I knew inside of me that he was not going to pull through. Eighteen hours later, Bart Moran is dead. He was an extraordinary father. He was a good husband, and he was everyone's best friend. In the first moments and then weeks after the crash, most everyone agreed if Bart had been wearing his seatbelt, he would have survived. This is in the police report from the scene. Note how this box is marked with an N for no seatbelt used. And then at the emergency room, an admitting nurse made a note that Bart was unrestrained. No seatbelt during the accident. But that was the mystery because Yvonne says she knew it couldn't possibly be true. I never knew of a single moment, when a single opportunity when he was not belted in a vehicle. Bart had a habit of wearing a seatbelt. His was to the point of obsession. Three other people who knew him would later testify that Bart always wore his seatbelt. One who carpooled with him even called him Mr. Seatbelt. He used to say, if this belt is not in the groove, this car don't move. Now, the police report said that Bart Moran didn't have his seatbelt on. That's right. And that's what had everybody so baffled. Billy Edwards is a family friend, a former rodeo rider, now a trial lawyer in Texas. She was told that he had been ejected from the car. She, it didn't make any sense to him. Edwards' team of investigators descended on the damaged van, looking for clues. They looked at how the glass broke and scattered, tried to calculate how and why Bart was thrown from a rear window, and they examined every tiny speck and tear. And then, on the floor of the back seat, they found a tub of auto polish. During the crash, Edwards' investigators say it opened and the polish splattered around the van. For Edwards, it was the key piece of evidence to explain what really happened to Bart Moran. It's pure happenstance. It's, it is a piece of grace. These pictures presented at trial show the polish splatters inside the van, including on the seat and the walls. But look at Bart's seat belt. Those little white splotches are auto polish. The polish is on a place on the belt where it had to be worn. If the belt was not worn, that part of the webbing would be down in the retractor and it could not have gotten the polish on it. But the maker of the van doesn't buy it. Chrysler says Bart was not wearing a seatbelt. If he had been, Chrysler says, there would have been more bruises on his body and some stress marks on the belt. So how does Chrysler explain the polish marks deep inside the coils of the belt? Police or some other contamination at the crash scene. For their part, the police said, not possible. They regarded it as a crime scene, and they didn't do it. So if he was wearing a seatbelt and he was thrown out of the car, what happened? Well, it came off. It's a design defect. This is a problem that affects every Gen 3 the Chrysler makes. Edward says the Gen 3 seatbelt, the kind in Bart's van, is Good. flawed. The Gen 3 looks different from most other seatbelts. See how the red release button sticks up? And that, say some safety advocates, is a big problem. In terms of seatbelt defects, this is one of the worst that I've ever seen. Clarence Ditlow is executive director for the Center for Auto Safety one of the nation's most recognized safety groups. He worries there is a problem with these seat belts that is underreported. It doesn't leave any evidence. Because who knows, after the crash, whether you were wearing the seat belt or not, because it's not on you. 
Dead men tell no tales. Look at this crash test conducted by the Canadian government on a Dodge Durango. Right there, the Gen 3 seatbelt pops open after the dummy hits it, releasing when it's so vitally needed in a crash. We wanted to ask Chrysler about the Gen 3 seatbelt, but the company declined numerous invitations for an on-camera interview. Is the Generation 3 a safe seatbelt? Yes. But in a phone conversation, Chrysler spokesperson Ann Smith acknowledged that the Gen 3 belts released even in some of the company's crash tests on the Durango and on the Dakota trucks. So they took the Gen 3 belts out of those vehicles. But she says in hundreds of other crash tests on their other vehicles, the belt didn't release. So what happened to Bart Moran's seatbelt? Edward says, look at this. It's called the ball test. Many auto companies, including GM and Ford, use it to see if their seatbelts open too easily. He showed us how easily Chrysler's Gen 3 seatbelts can come undone. A ball bearing is pushed against the seatbelt release button to see if it releases. The idea is the ball simulates an elbow or a small object that might hit the buckle and release it during a crash, an outcome no one wants. Primetime wanted to see for ourselves, so we hired ARCA, a Pennsylvania engineering firm, to do our tests. ARCA has extensive experience investigating and testing crashes for the government, the military, industry, and plaintiff's attorneys. ARCA tested 15 different seatbelts, including the Gen 3, and some of the most popular selling minivans and sedans. This is to simulate how much tension would be in a seatbelt system. After the test, Larry Sicker, one of the ARCA engineers, showed me how it worked with a belt from a 2001 GM Oldsmobile silhouette. We start in the middle of the buckle and we bring it up onto the uh, release button and try and press down, work our way backwards and forward a number of times. And no, we're not getting a release. Then he showed me a 2001 Ford Taurus. You're not releasing. And then he showed me the belt from a 2001 Dodge Intrepid. It's equipped with a Generation 3 seat belt. I'd bring it up from the housing and I'd push on the button and it releases. And this one released. The Gen 3 didn't release once or twice. It failed every single ball test. Alan Cantor is the CEO for ARCA, the testing company we hired. We ran 280 tests altogether. Uh, 60 of them were on the uh, Generation 3. In fact, the engineers here used two sizes of balls, a 30-millimeter ball, which is the most stringent ball test for safety, GM uses it, and a larger 40-millimeter ball, which is more widely used. The General Motors seat belts you tested, all passed the 40-millimeter test? Uh, yes, they did. The Ford? Passed it every time. Honda and Toyota also passed the 40-millimeter test each time. And the Chrysler Generation 3? It failed every single time. I asked Ann Smith of Chrysler about that. If 14 seatbelts are tested and all but the Gen 3 pass this 40 millimeter ball test, doesn't that tell you something? What it told our scientists was this is a seatbelt that they consider unsafe. Smith told me the Gen 3 seatbelts are safe and pass all federal standards, even if they do open with the ball test. But he never should have been ejected. Seatbelt should have held him. And he'd be here today. Yvonne Moran sued Chrysler. The company denied responsibility. Its attorneys argued Bart was not wearing his seatbelt and that the Gen 3 belts are safe. But Edwards had other evidence to show the jury. According to trial depositions, in the 1990s, an earlier Chrysler seatbelt, the Gen 2, was passing a 30-millimeter ball test. But Edwards then showed the jury an internal Chrysler document, which he says shows how the company dropped one of its own seatbelt safety tests. When the company found the new Gen 3 wouldn't pass the ball test, the test was thrown out. The initial design of it didn't meet the ball test, so they just scrapped the ball test and rushed this into production. 